You're listening to the American Scalds Nordic Sound Podcast, promoting Nordic music history and culture wherever podcasts can be found. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Nordic Sound Podcast. Following up on last week's first interview with Alakar, I'm incredibly happy to see that it was by far the most popular content I've done here on the channel, and it was interesting to me that so many of you migrated over to YouTube to watch it instead of listening to it here on the podcast. With that episode, the channel hit a thousand views finally, and it seems like you all found it interesting and valuable. So, going forward, these interviews will not take the place of regularly scheduled episodes here on the podcast like it did last week. That said, I do have some feelers out already for my next interview guests, so stay tuned and hopefully we'll have another sometime in the next month. So, as always, thank you all for your support. It really means a lot to me. So, this week we'll be taking a look at Edvard Grieg's dear friend and confidant, who we talked about in Grieg's episode, Johan Halvorsen. Johan Halvorsen was one of the last standing of the old guard of Norway's golden age of music. As Grieg, Grundahl, and Svensson all passed away around the same time, Norway suddenly found itself without all three of its most beloved composers all at once. Despite this, it was Johan Halvorsen who essentially took the weight of the old generation on his back, and continued to write music and cultivate a music culture within Norway itself in a way that honored the goals of that very generation he looked up to with so much respect. For, as we will see, Johan Halvorsen brought Norwegian concert music culture up to the standards which Bull and Svensson dreamed of, and he incorporated the Hardanger fiddle itself, not just imitations of it, into his compositions, and all the while fulfilling his dear friend Grieg's vision and Winterhelm's of having a music style informed by, and not merely flavored with, Norwegian music traditions, in a way that can be appreciated by local and foreign audiences alike. All the while keeping a prolific conducting and soloist career. So, suffice it to say, Johan Halvorsen was a pretty remarkable character who carried the weight of Norway's blossoming music scene into the 20th century. But first, before we get into the meat of this episode, I have a special announcement. One of the most consistent bits of feedback I've been getting from folks listening to the podcast, be they longtime listeners or those who just poke their head in for a minute, is the fact that people find it quite off-putting that I call this a music podcast without actually playing music. Some of you may remember a time when I did, and you probably remember the reason why I stopped. So as all of you know, I've been wrestling with this for quite some time, and ultimately decided to steer clear of music samples because I just didn't want to deal with the headache of a potential legal issue. As this is a hobby and a passion of mine, I really don't want it to be a potential headache. However, after talking with other content creators and listening to other music podcasts, I think my anxieties around this might have been a bit overstated. And yes, it might make me seem fickle, but putting your feedback into action and wanting what's best for this podcast so you all get as much out of it as possible, I'm happy to tell you that I spent the last week reincorporating music samples into every episode up until this point. So, if you go back to listen to the Berlins, Thrain, Bull, Svensson, Grieg, all of the episodes up until this point, save for Kroger's, now have music in them reflecting the pieces and themes I talk about in those episodes, offering a more holistic music history experience. And yes, that means that from now on, these episodes will once again have music samples. And if any company wants to claim that what I'm doing here isn't fair use for education or commentary, so be it. Let them come. So I hope you're all happy with this news, as I'm feeling a little emboldened myself with how much it seems you all have been enjoying the show. And as I said, I want you all to get as much out of this podcast as possible, and to show you that your feedback really does matter to me. So... Without further ado, let's learn about our hardanger fiddling composer friend, Johan Halvorsen. Johan Halvorsen was born in Drama, Norway in 1864, where he took lessons from a German immigrant named Christian Jennigen for piano, flute, cornet, and violin. When he was 15, he moved to Christiania for more musical training, and here we can note an important shift. When Grieg and Svensson were 15, they needed to ship off to Leipzig, or Germany in general, but Halvorsen was able to get a music education without leaving Norway's borders. This is a pretty important shift that shows the effect of Grieg, Svensson, Grundahl, and others. There is now a way to learn music within Norway itself. While training in Christiania, he found a job as a violinist in the folk theater, which focused on accessible music and dramas for entertainment rather than cutting-edge classical works. He would remain here for four years, only broken up by tours around Norway with the acting company. All the while, Halvorsen continued taking violin lessons until 1884, when he traveled to Sweden to study in the Stockholm Conservatory of Music. 
While studying here, he kept a sturdy job as a theater musician. So remember at this time, Norway was under Swedish rule rather than Danish, which is why Sweden starts to become a bit more present in the arts of Norway compared to Denmark earlier in the century with those like Thrain and Alla Bull. Johan Halvorsen would only remain in Stockholm for a year, however, and returned to Bergen in 1885 to become a concertmaster of the Harmonian in Bergen. A little bit of terminology, a concertmaster is the leader of the violin section in the orchestra and serves as the right-hand man of the conductor, if you will. Considering he was only 21 at the time, this was quite the achievement. Young Johan proved to be quite restless, however, when again he left that post after just another year to travel to Leipzig, where he learned violin from the famous Russian Adolf Brodsky. It was here at Leipzig where he became acquainted with other Norwegian musicians, most notably Grieg from episode 10 and Christian Sinding, who we will learn about next week. Opposed to Grieg and Sinding, however, he was, like young Svensson, aiming to become a violin virtuoso above all else. In Leipzig and Stockholm, he was only concerned with all things violin-related. After training at Leipzig, he worked as a violinist and violin teacher in Aberdeen, then moved on to Finland to teach at the Helsinki Music Institute. Apparently, Halvorsen had trouble staying in one place for too long and seems to have been quite restless. Something about the Finnish musical environment, however, kept him far more stimulated than elsewhere, and he would stay here for three years. This is an important stage in his life because this is the first time he found himself composing. More remarkably, though, he began composing without formal instruction. In this regard, he's our first self-taught composer covered in Norway since Alla Bull and Valdemar Thrain. What a wonderful work. This is one of the most exemplary works of his early years, and one of my personal favorites, his suite for violin and piano in G minor. The opening is a clear homage to Grieg's In the Hall of the Mountain King, but the reference to Grieg quickly gives way to Halvorsen's own rather charismatic violin writing. We see something fresh in Halvorsen's music in this piece in particular, and that's his ability to compose more traditionally set music forms with a hint of a lush romantic flair. This style of writing, and further his incredibly dramatic way of conducting, would land him a job as the musical director of Bergen's National Music Theater. It would be at this job where Halvorsen would start experimenting with an early take on what will later be called neoclassicism, when a 20th century composer takes a classical piece from the 18th century and reworks it in an updated way that makes it more relatable to modern audiences. He would also do this with probably his best known work, Passacaglia for Violin and Viola, which is a reworked Haydn melody from his suite in G minor. Now, I usually like to show you these pieces in their original compositional form, you know, the way that the composer intended them to be heard. But I think I would be remiss to not instead, in the spirit of Johann Halvorsen, show you an arrangement of this work for Hardanger Fiddle and Cello with Ronhild Hemsing and Benedikt Kluckner. Absolutely stunning. Easily one of my favorite examples of a hardanger fiddle in a classical setting. So in this new job as the music director of the National Theater, the Norwegian public was finding an heir to both Johann Svensson and Edvard Grieg. In a lot of ways, and as mentioned, he is also fulfilling Otter Winterhelm's vision of a Norwegian music style that is both Norwegian and cosmopolitan. It would be during this time where Johann Halvorsen would compose many essentially Norwegian pieces of music, from Sweet Ancian to Brigenziana to the Norwegian dances, and even a work called Fossegrimmen, which we will get to in a moment. This is also when we see Halvorsen's upbringing in the theater start to shine through and show his individuality as a conductor, for neither Grieg nor Svensson were ever much involved with the theater. Grieg, of course, had the Pierre Gens suites, but that was only one job by contract, essentially, while Halvorsen actually worked and immersed himself in the theater. 
Simply put, with his new job, he was able to present his compositions to the theater-attending public as well, which expanded his potential audience by quite a bit. This theatrical flair can perhaps best be found in his composition, Boyerena's Entrance March, inspired by the Heimskringla, which would become a global success. In this incidental music that is music that is written for a play, one notices Halvorsen's love for all things theatrical. Even his role model, the great Johann Svensson, would praise Halvorsen as a true master. So by all accounts, Halvorsen was meant to lead the orchestra from the podium rather than from the violin. This isn't to say that he gave up his dream of being a violin soloist, though, because after getting his foot in the door as a conductor, only a year later the capital would become quite accustomed to his virtuosity as he performed his own compositions as conductor, violinist, violist, and pianist. This guy really could do it all, it seems. But eventually, of course, he started to feel suffocated and restless in the relatively small town of Bergen and set his sights on the conductor position of the Christiania National Theatre. It would prove challenging, as no one in Christiania knew of him, but he held a concert there featuring many of his own compositions, and it was nothing short of an absolute success. All doubt of Halvorsen's ability was decimated by his performance as a conductor, where one critic noted, quote, the beat became a magic wand in his hand. His compositions took audiences and hiring committees by surprise and enchanted them from their first line to the final cadence. By 1919, Halvorsen would be the conductor of Norway's largest symphony orchestra. He would perform musical drama performances six nights a week, in addition to symphony and chamber concerts and matinees, a total of 300 concerts over the course of two decades. He used this position to bring the mainstream music of Europe to Norwegian audiences too. He would draw audiences in with headlining favorites from Grieg and Svensson, but then sneak in Beethoven, Berlioz, Liszt, Wagner, Tchaikovsky, and others as well. He would also program newer composers such as Sibelius, Debussy, and Nielsen, and even brought Rachmaninoff to Norway for the very first time. He was also the first conductor to succeed in bringing opera to Norway, which is quite the accomplishment, as all other previous attempts failed by both Bull and Grieg. The Norwegian public just didn't have a taste for it. Under Halvorsen's watch, though, the audiences of Christiania were experiencing the great works of Verdi's Aida and Wagner's Lohengrin for the very first time, and they were loving it. International music magazines brought Halvorsen nothing but praise for opening the gates of opera into Norway. So, from Beethoven to opera, Halvorsen was succeeding immensely in bringing foreign culture to relatively insular Norwegian audiences, in a way no other composer succeeded before him, and this alone makes him pretty significant in the grand scheme of Norwegian music history. Halvorsen would remain the music director of both Bergen and Christiania, and he was responsible for almost all of the performances during this time. This means that he had fertile ground for his own compositions as well. And no, this is not the case of a mediocre composer using his job as a conductor to bring his mediocre music to the concert stage, but rather the case of an incredible conductor showcasing his own phenomenal music as well.
His most critically acclaimed work, however, was Fossegrimmen. And yes, this is the very same Fossegrimmen we talked about in Ala Bull's episode in episode 5. And this was what officially brought him into the same class as Bull, Karolf, and Grieg. In the play and its accompanying music, Halvorsen actually outgrieged Grieg, as Fossegrimmen is pretty monumental for the simple fact that this was the first time in the history of classical music where someone wrote for the Hardanger fiddle in a classical setting of this capacity. Yes, Olibull played the Hardanger fiddle and wrote for himself, but he mostly played it as a folk instrument. Halvorsen wrote for it as if it were a part of the orchestra, and in my opinion, and the opinions of many who experienced the performances, he integrated it seamlessly in a way that made it seem right at home on the concert stage. The reason he did the instrument such justice in this composition is because Halvorsen himself picked up the Hardanger fiddle during his honeymoon to Hardangerfjord, with Grieg's niece, in 1894 where he learned from the local players and soon bought his own. A piece such as Fossegrimmen could only have been composed by someone like Halvorsen, who had both Svensson's knack for orchestration and conducting, and Ola Bull's showmanship and intimate relationship with the Hardanger fiddle. The success of this piece was multiplied by the fact that it was coupled with Norway's achievement of independence in 1905. In 1905, Halvorsen's work Falsegrimmen would prove to be the only acceptable score to the fervor of Norwegian nationalism in the wake of ultimate independence. Thus Halvorsen, inheriting all of the best traits of Svensson, Grieg, Grundal, and Ola Bull, would have been overcome with emotion seeing audiences and critics everywhere admiring the music of Falsegrimmen in such a way. It can be safe to say that Halvorsen's life was remarkable. He explored countless musical styles as a self-taught composer, brought the national theaters of Norway to par with the rest of Europe, composed the first orchestral piece for Hardanger fiddle, and was even knighted by the order of Finland's Vitoros. If there is one individual that can be credited with dedicating their life to the concert culture of Norway, it would be Johan Halvorsen. After 50 years of sincere and passionate dedication to the musical life of Norway, I think Halvorsen more than earned his rest in the Hall of Honor at Vorsavier's tomb in Oslo. And so friends, that brings us to the end of this week's episode on Johan Halvorsen. If you're liking the show, I encourage you to subscribe, leave a review, and join my mailing list on my website at theamericanscald.com. And you can also join our Reddit community at r slash Nordic Sound as well. And don't be a stranger, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to email me through my website or message me on Instagram. I always love hearing from you all. So, as always, thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you again on the American Scald's Nordic Sound podcast. Mm -hmm.